It is the Anfield Wrap on this Monday. I am Neil Atkinson and I am joined by Neil Docking, by Phil Blundell and by John Gibbons. It's the third in our Big Question series. Uh, we may well do these into the new year behind the paywall. Uh, but this first one, is, sorry, this third one, sorry, is about ticketing. Uh, it is about the ticket question. And we'll start in this very specific area. John Gibbons, it's hard, this. And I've written an agenda out, and I was writing it out this morning going, well, all of number two could be the whole show. And I ended up hitting number, well, I hit number nine with conclusion, but I ended up hitting number eight. And I think that's the first thing I want to sort of make clear as we get into this, that the ticketing questions are always difficult. It is difficult because demand currently outstrips supply by a lot. And so it's always going to be hard. And it's also hard... I think for Liverpool Football Club and and listen, I'm sure they're going to come into some criticism during this podcast. It you know be weird if, if they didn't at some point get criticised. But where I do feel for them is the I know they try and have dialogue, and lots of people tell them they do it in lots of different ways. And if we're honest, it's it's whatever would suit them. <laughs> and so and so at the moment, you know, I you know, there's a solid theory of ticketing, yeah. and in, and it also at times includes game kickoff times, which yeah. appears to be whatever suits me and my mates, please. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a genuine yeah. sort of policy that a lot of people hold. Yeah, and so there isn't there isn't this obvious solution that the club are ignoring, you know, either to make more money or to make it easier for themselves. I don't think. I think the thing there are ways that. You know, it could be better and fairer, I think. And listen, we're going to explore them now. But starting from the position of it is really hard, I think, is is the fair one. It is. It's important, Phil, that also. Firstly, I want to be really clear about one thing. Uh, I have access to a season ticket. You and John both have season tickets in your name. Neil is a member uh, and gets his tickets through members in amongst this. Other thing to point out is that we're all... Broadly speaking, um, white heterosexual men from the from the region, uh, and I've been from the region for an extended period of time. That's worth pointing out as well. And that's an important part of, of where I think this conversation gets gets really difficult indeed. And the next thing about this as well is that we all have differing levels of numbers of away games we may or may not want to go to uh, in amongst there as well. That's both domestic and European. The point about this is that we are not ourselves, each four of us, each of us four, coming at it from one perspective, and similar. Simultaneously, we're well aware of the fact there's perspectives that are much wider and broader than ours. Yeah, this is the this is the thing, isn't it? That the club have got to keep a lot of people with very different interests happy in in different ways. There's some people who want to go and do go every game. I do probably if Liverpool play 60 games a season, I'm at 53, 54 somewhere in that region. Of them, I will miss one a month. I have my own season ticket with all the credits on. It's got 19 aways, every cup tie, every. FA Cup game since I think Burnley in 2005 because basically if you haven't got Burnley in 2005 as a friend of mine was on holiday for you then couldn't go to Wimbledon in 2015 just due to how the, the tickets went and it is it is a it's a I mean, mad, that's it's mad, stop it, really? that's because yeah. that was 17 yeah. years they didn't, ago they didn't use Burnley f- yeah. specifically for that credit but the accumulation of credits to go they to that Wimbledon game. <laughs> yeah. they should just pick I went so they definitely like, should <laughs> <laughs> like they didn't I mean, if I got called off I yeah, went twice yeah. <laughs> yeah they didn't use, so they didn't use it specifically for that game but Burnley got you for example Luton in 2007 yeah. which got you I don't know something in 2000 and Oldham in 2012 it basically all stems from Wimbledon. this Burnley, it all, Burnley game it all leads back to something and it is a bit mad that that happens yeah. but that is how it is if you so want if, the privilege of seeing the Suarez handball against Mansfield yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> you've got to enjoy the own Jimmy goal Shiori, by Shiori, yeah, Shiori, literally yeah. that, and, that, and they're seven years apart and one of them's ten years ago and if you didn't get Mansfield and we get I don't know Crawley Town in the fourth round of the FA Cup you probably can't go to Crawley which is a mad way but at the same time how, how do you do it differently and this is the complexity of, of everything the club has is that there are a finite number of tickets and there are considerably more people that would yeah. use these tickets if given the opportunity. The last bit of context I think it's really important to put out here, Neil, is with the possible exception, and it's become less so across the last few years of Manchester United, there is not another club in the country who faces the same issues that Liverpool face. And I think that this is also really important. It isn't as though Liverpool can go and look at someone else's model for anything. I include distribution of away tickets in that. I include distribution of European away tickets in that. <laughs> Liverpool can't go and look at what anyone else is doing and say, maybe we can do it a little bit like that. You know, I, I am aware of what Manchester United do because they are the only real relevant, I think, comparison. I don't genuinely think there is another one. 
and that's something else that makes it hard and that isn't just unique to this country that again is like a worldwide phenomena because of how different fan bases act interact size of size of stadia so on and so forth yeah it's a unique it's a unique problem and obviously Manchester United Old Trafford is 20,000 seats more than Anfield um, but there's easily I'd say 20,000 people who want to be in Anfield every week uh, who can't be I think you've already more, I think isn't yeah. I genuinely think it is I mean you've already all acknowledged it but this is it is a divisive issue this and it's one which causes friction between supporters and I want to say from the get-go you know that you, it's difficult sometimes to see it beyond your own perspective and so I've had years as someone who's been on the, I've been on the season ticket waiting list for 20 years so I signed up in... What number are you? Asking? I'm you about 4,300. Oh, that's tight for the new <laughs> stand. It is tight for the new well, stand. Well, you haven't even said how many no. seats. No, if it's the same exactly. ratio, it's not, if it's the same ratio as the rest of the ground, it won't be a million. No, I don't think it's going to make it. And, and mad, <laughs> maddening is enough. My dad and me both applied on the same day to be on the waiting ticket list in the same envelope. And I know that because I did it. <laughs> I applied for both <laughs> of us on the same day and he's 70 seats ahead of me in the queue. So quite how they took the two of them and <laughs> just threw them up in the air. They've, and they've opened that up. They just sort them. They're just in a big pile. They pulled them together. That's Someone the went for the lunch half <laughs> yeah, So when my dad get, finally gets his season ticket and I don't, you know, it's going to be <laughs> hell to pay. But but the issue is that over the years, you know, obviously, so I've I uh, I'm lucky to have more than thirteen credits. So effectively, I can get a ticket for every game I want to go to, and I go to nearly every game at Anfield. So in many ways, I feel almost like a, a second-class season ticket holder. But I fully appreciate the season ticket holders who've shown far greater, even greater loyalty. They've been going for far longer than I have. They go to every game. They have to have commitment. There's all different aspects of it is what I'm saying. So there'll be season ticket holders that I look at frustratingly and envy and I'm jealous of. And there'll be some of them who'll look back and say, well, why? And then there'll be the lads who can't get a ticket for any game who mm. thinks, well, what are you moaning about? Yeah. Um, and, and so you've always got to think I'm privileged to be in the position I am. Uh, but it's so it is fraught every season it's fraught it's difficult and you know affordability and you're, you're also playing the lottery of how much my ticket's going to cost as well in terms of because yeah. if you like for anyone who doesn't know the the members say this twice a year and you basically get thrown into a random number generator to see where you are in the queue and if you're at the back of the queue you're paying fifty-seven pound a game. If you're at the front of the queue, you're paying forty-two pound a game. Extrapolated over the course of a season, it's quite it's quite a lot of money. money. It's like yeah. I've, I, my mates in sale and I help them, and it's like a case of someone will get in first. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's them. Whatever happens, and then you come to pay for it, and you're like, Christ! If I'd have bought these three tickets there instead, it's like forty-five pound a game for yeah. like over the three people. It's in, and it is insane, and that's the that's the lottery that the members have to play. That obviously season ticket holders don't. You just mm. know how much it's going to cost. That's our caveat. Uh, it's gone on, uh, the caveat process. I think we've been caveating there, John, for eight minutes, which I think is, is I feel like caveat Bob, uh, I think is, <laughs> is it's part of what contextualises again why this is difficult and also why this is a, it's a complex conversation. For me, one of the core things, and it's interesting listening to Neil talk about the loyalty and commitment of existing season ticket holders, you as a long-standing existing season ticket holder, you are obviously very loyal and very committed one of the things I think you've almost got to acknowledge here philosophically before we do anything else is if someone just got your ticket somehow tomorrow, they might be as loyal and as committed. And I think that's a bit which is always, always a difficult part of this, that, you know, we're, we're left in this, in, in this situation where you don't want to feel as though everyone's got to do a bar chart of precisely how I'm going to show you my stripes, but also people probably get to ha- or to have the opportunity to earn some stripes at the same time and, and that's finite as well in amongst all of this and then it's back to a conversation about who holds the tickets both quite literally and also in people's general mindset yeah it's 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 probably is getting to the point now where they're seeing tickets is more of a privilege I think than rather than you know in the past where you know the club would have been so grateful for for people buying season tickets you know I mean, we, we got ours, I say ours, it was a family in 92 and the, when there was no waiting list, they built the, the, the new stand, at the, the centenary stand, the upper centenary, there was seen to get available and, and, and my dad, who'd, who'd, who'd just come into a bit of a money from inheritance, decided that's what he was going to spend the money on. And, um, Good on him. Yeah, well, I would say so, yeah, as an investment, <laughs> it was a wise one. Um, and so went down and, and bought, and so then there was there was no seen to get, you know, waiting list. Um, we we just won the FA Cup, but you know the league form wasn't sort of brilliant and and stuff like that. Um, 
obviously Liverpool economically in the early 90s so it was it still wasn't in great nicks so there's lots of reasons why you know these seasons to get to a, a plus the bigger stand were, were, were sort of available but then sort of quite soon after they go away I think for a while you know, there has been the thing, it's like, well, they're lucky to have us, you know what I mean? We, we do this and we put our money up up front and so blah, blah, blah. And, and I think, you know, that that all obviously still is the case. But I think now, you know, seeing to get hold of us, we do, you know, we do have to feel fortunate because there's so many people who would bite our hand off for A, to go to every game, but B, just the convenience of it. Like, I don't envy my friends, of which Neil is one of them, having to go through these these processes, you know. You know, now they've limited it to, to twice a year, haven't they? But it's just like... So it used to be every game, you know, you'd have to buy four and, and I have friends who like, you know, it was basically built into calendars and, and you know, it depends depends where you work as well, I think, is a, is another factor. You know, you talked before about, you know, the what you know, the, the things that sort of separate us as well. But like just like having an office job yeah. and how that separates you from someone who you works in a warehouse. Yeah, well, works on a building size. You can't just, you know, disappear off. But you might not even have access to a computer. Do you know what I mean? And so, and so, just sorts of stuff like that. Really, how, how that's such. So they, 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 they put it into two, but, um, you know, but that, that that just sort of builds, you know, extra stress sort of around these days. It's almost like having two extra glass to be sales every year for these people, really. And you know, it is like I do feel fortunate when I sort of do watch it, and also. You know, being in the you know the the situation around, you know, my my dad passed away a few years ago, and and you know the club let me keep the ticket, uh, which I'm grateful for. But there's an argument that they shouldn't, and so that's another thing as well. Really, is that do do, do seems to get you know should seems to go to stay in family sort of forever, or should or should it be like well we're sorry to hear that, but but we're taking that back because Neil's been on the waiting list twenty years and he deserves it more than you know your wife. Um, <laughs> and so and so, do you know what I mean? And so, there's, so there's there's that there's that thing in the in there as well. And um, you know, it is there's so many, like anything really. We'll say like, like a lot of things. You know, the more you can have these set rules and set things, and but the more you 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 throw individual circumstances and things into it, the more it starts to you know seem like unfair on someone or, or, or problems emerge. The idea, Phil, of who holds the tickets, and this goes for this goes for domestic aways, European aways, to an extent, even homes, domestic homes. I think who's always held the tickets, who gets the spare tickets. Ultimately, we we have the friendship circles that we have. We have the friendship circles that we grew up with. On the whole, that does change, and it does change over the course of your life. You meet new people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but behaviours get set, and now it's also whose WhatsApp groups are you in is I think a way that's really sort of, I think, drilled down into that. And I I want to be really clear again through the caveats. I have not bought very many tickets from Liverpool Football Club in the last 15 years of my life. I've been to a lot of football matches. Mm. And, you know, within that, I, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to be honest about that up to a certain point during this podcast. But the, the question of who gets the spare tickets when they come up is I'll say again, you know, as 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 John says, there's an aspect there of of literally or who gets the tickets when they come up, literally what your job is, impact upon that, but also quite literally, you know, whether or not you're a man or a woman, impact upon that. Because you're more men tend to have the tickets, tend to have the loyalties, tend to control those tickets. They then tend to put it into a WhatsApp group with a lot of other men in. In Liverpool, you know, there's there's, there's there is uh Liverpool is is a relatively white city in comparison to many others in, in England as well. Uh I think that that's changing and uh, for the better and has changed and has changed in our friendship circles over a period of time. But that still also defines to an extent who gets the away tickets when they're coming up as spare as well. Those behaviours, those WhatsApp groups, essentially, those learned behaviours, they are stuck in there. And it's one of the reasons why a Liverpool crowd can look very similar week in, week out. Yeah, it's, it's mostly about networks, isn't it? And how the ticket finds itself into the network and when it's distributed within that network. <laughs> A lot of people have found themselves in networks through going to the football. I think this is an important thing that needs to be yes, pointed yeah. out. It isn't that they just randomly find themselves in it. You go, to, you get on coaches to a ways, for example, and you will yeah. talk to people, and then they'll go. The three weeks later, they might go, "Oh, that I, I remember him. He was sounds. I'll get him he, was, a he was asking one for City away. Yeah, and that's how people find tickets. And there's then there's downsides to this, and there's upsides to this, and it sort of links into the the friends and family. Which I don't know if you want to come on to that in a minute or you want me to just go into Let's that go into now? it now. Because I think there was there was a bit of a, a lot of unhappiness about there was an initial idea that you capped the friends and family at six people, which it was never going to work due to the system ultimately because, for example, 
on a European away, you can buy 10 tickets. So if you're only allowed six people on your friends and family, yep. you can't buy 10 tickets. So that was that was obviously never going to work. So they basically capped it at an unlimited thing, but they closed it at the start of the season. Now, there was a lot of people annoyed that it start, closed at the start of the season simply because that meant that you had to distribute it to someone that you knew at the time, which I didn't really get why people were annoyed with this because ultimately if you don't know someone in June or July or whenever they closed it, why should that person be getting the ticket in September when there is someone who you also didn't know in June who would get that ticket if you sold it back to the club, which is what the, the whole process of this friends and family thing was. If one of your mates needs a ticket, give it to one of your mates. And if none of them need a ticket, you sell it back to the club, which I think is basically the fairest logical solution because it doesn't remove the ability to give a ticket to someone you know or you know your mate's son or something like that that who would want to go to the match. That is... That is that has always but you been. You need to have got them in before the exactly, start of the season. Exactly, exactly. But if you haven't got them in before the start of the season, there's a lot of people really annoyed that you can't just suddenly give a ticket yep. to someone who is unidentified in June, six months later. And I, I disagree with that as a concept. That that that's not how the tickets should be distributed. Even though that these networks have existed in that way for a long time. Now you can add that person the summer after. That's that's absolutely fine. You get the opportunity to add them every year. It's not closed forever. But there's, there has to be a thing where tic- people can buy a ticket off Liverpool because not everyone is in these networks and not everyone is able to find their way into these networks. But that doesn't mean that these networks are wrong to exist or shouldn't exist or shouldn't be able to to pass tickets on because th- football is about communities. If you go and sit with like in the ground, there are communities of people who only know each other through going to football in terms of whether that's in the pub before before the game or when you're sat in your seat I sit around loads of people to speak to all of them I know basically one of them outside of being yeah. in the ground I don't know all the names that's it now you start removing these communities you sort of break up the atmosphere and what makes Anfield special to some point so there's a there really is a, a there's a, a real tipping point of how you manage this correctly and Again, this comes down to what we've said from the start. It is so, so hard, so hard to manage this. Yeah, it, it's interesting listening to you there because a, a lot of those experiences are similar to mine. The, the friends and family was originally brought in as a way of you could buy tickets yeah. on behalf of someone else. So you could have a group of you all trying for tickets and then if one of you gets through on the dreaded windows, windows of doom, which you've got open on your laptop, on your phone, you know, you all sat there, all huddled round. I'm trying to explain my dad what he needs to press and not to press back. Um, you know, like, you know, people would say about ringing your nan up and asking her to record something on telly. It's that kind of situation, trying to get your dad not to press the wrong thing when he's finally got in. So it was set up so you could all help each other, but it also meant that you could buy tickets together, yeah. which is just so different, such a different experience being in a group of three or four of you. Last couple of years, I've been really lucky. Uh, Dan Austin, the ticket whisperer, um, I've had him on the case for me in all the sales. We both try at the same time. As I say, so does my dad, a few of us. And Dan invariably just somehow seems to know how to do it. He seems to get in. And then, yeah, he can get us four tickets at the back of the cop, 37 quid each. This most recent sale, we couldn't get in. Either of us, I spent two and a half hours waiting when I was meant to be working. Finally got in and we're in the main stand, <laughs> 57 quid a time, which, as you said, extrapolate it over a course of how many games. That's however many hundred pounds more you're paying it's a really difficult thing to to go through but it's the I think we need a bit of a sort of a so you've got obviously your body of season ticket holders and then you had a priority ticket scheme which was like a PTS a, yeah. PTS a, a secondary one and that's what I signed up for and what I want to get across I think is that the club have tried year on year to improve this and, and make it better and they have a lot, a lot of things have changed for the better so the PTS there was something like 10,000 PTS members but 5,000 of them only went to like two games. And there was, was it also 5,000 tickets. And there was 5,000 yeah. tickets. So I was a PTS member and it meant I was guaranteed a ticket. All of a sudden, because 5,000 weren't really trying, there was 5,000. They 5, just 000. basically wanted to go to the games that they could go to. Yeah. And it was a great guarantee of a ticket for yeah, that. Yeah. So, so I was able to get a ticket for every game in the PTS scheme. And then I was like, well, that's not really right because there's so many other people who want tickets. So they scrapped the PTS scheme and they brought in the official membership. You pay. £27 or 36 36 if you want a mug and a scarf. Um, 
and then you have the ability yeah, to you're buy. You're right for mugs and scarves. I'm all right for mugs and scarves. <laughs> I've got a lot of Liverpool pin badges. As an official member of 20 years, I have a lot of pin badges in a box. Because um, <laughs> I feel like I've got to keep them. Oh, yeah, but, pay for them. Yeah. Uh, so I think now the official members, there's 10,000 tickets available. Uh, and if the, if you, you're obviously you're in the queue system for hours trying to get in. I'm desperate to get a ticket in the cop for financial reasons. But I'm also aware that I'm not probably going to be able to go to all of those games because with work, with shifts changing, with uh, games changing for TV, you're being asked to plan your life months in advance, which is a really difficult thing to do. In July, I know what game I'll want to go to in the middle of November. Uh, two weeks ago, the tickets for the last day of the season went on sale, which is in yeah. literally six months. To be fair, at least we know when it kicks off. Yes, that is true. <laughs> that that is, that's, that's a fair point. <laughs> but a lot of them, it will move, and you know, work patterns, and and then also, you know, you need access. In my instance, my dad's credit card, because it's not often that I have five, six hundred quid sat about in my bank account. Yeah. So you need a credit card. You need to be able to get resources together. It's it's, it's a big commitment. But, it, but what's changed this year on that though is that if you can't attend and you pass that ticket over, you lose the loyalty. That's changed yeah, so, for members this year, and so that's that, an important thing to point out on this. So that was my point was going to be. So the way it's worked, the official membership, if you've had, you've had staggered sales, so you've had a sale for people with thirteen plus credits, thirteen or more games from the season before, and for those who were less than thirteen, and it's very hard to get up to more than thirteen if you're in that group below. Certainly, if you're stuck on three or four, it can be done. If we, as you There's said, got to be some serious clicking of some stadium maps. Serious it's... clicking, an office job, ten of you on the case. It's like a second job. I mean, I remember the days missing lectures because I'd be on the phone lines ringing up for tickets. You are number one hundred and four in the queue. It's safe. I'm not getting to this lecture. Um, you used to be able to get on the build your credits up with cup games because you could physically go down to the ground. Yeah. So, so I made it. I'm going to get on that list. I'm going to get the credit. So, so in you know the end of Julia era, where obviously it was a little bit easier, but then Rafa too, I would go down the ground at half five in the morning. I'd set my alarm for half five, get down the ground for six a.m. I'd queue up for like two and a half, three hours. You know, sometimes all the way around the stadium, literally from one end of the ground to the other to the cop. You'd stand in the queue. Eventually, you'd get your ticket, and so you knew you could get on the ladder that way if you could. But again, how can you do that? I was a student. Or, but, but just to be clear though, now though, if you, you, you've got to be over 13, get credits yeah. in order to be able to do what you do with Dan. To, and with to have it guaranteed. And yeah. if you don't go in now, you'll lose the credits. Yeah, so, so the way they changed it, the friends and, friends and family you used to be able to transfer your tickets to anyone and you would keep the credit. So it was a closed shop. So effectively, if you're a friend of mine, like we were mm. saying, I could sort out mates. If there was a, a fellow at work who said, oh, you know, I'd love to take my son the match, but I can't do it. Well, I'd be like, well, I know in, in four weeks' time there's a game that my dad can't get up for, I can't go to, I'd, I'd just sort them the ticket. And it was a nice thing to do, pass it on at face value. But ultimately, I was keeping the reward, I was keeping the loyalty, and they weren't getting any, so they weren't getting on the ladder, which is obviously unfair. I mean, it suited me. Um, but it, it wasn't fair. Now, if I think you can distribute two tickets a season to anyone, so like just all you need is an email address. You can do that twice. From that point on, you can only forward tickets. They call it now to people who are on your friends and family. As we said, it's got to be set in advance. The difference is they have a membership number and they they then receive the credit. So if I have a mate who, you know, invariably is my go-to guy who I know will take a ticket off me if I can't go for whatever reason, he might be able to build up to six credits of tickets he's had off me. And then through a bit of hard work and savvy and whatever, he might be able to get up to that magic 13 number. So it is, it's a lot fairer. But then the issue is, I've got to make sure I stay at 13. Yeah. I was about to say, yeah. There and is, and with your work shift patterns and the fact that you've got to do it all in advance. And I've got a family. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you just, you've just you got to knock a game on the head. The Your other lad's thing... going holiday during the football season as well. That's important. Yeah. Well, I saw, it was, you know, it was like I mentioned before about, you know, the things sound great until you're giving a specific example. I saw a, a, a woman on Twitter. I can't remember her name. It was, it was back in the summer when this changed. She, says, she said, I've just had a baby. I've got 13, 14 credits that have built up. I I'm, can't reasonably can't go next season. I've got a baby to to look after, but she's like, I've just basically all this thing. I've I've when I'm ready to go again in th two three years time, like I've got to start again. And I was just like, that is. Can I say that? Yeah, Charlotte. I don't know if you can, but that's it. Yeah, her Charlotte. We'll say her name Charlotte. Yeah. We'll do, uh, Phil's, Phil's, Phil, do you remember sort of seeing the tweets? And and I was just like, that's something I hadn't even thought about. Do you know what I mean? And partly because I'm a man. 
Um, so you know, I've just had two kids, but I still get to go to the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I get to blag it to be job, but you know what I mean. But but like, <laughs> but th- th- that is another thing, isn't it? Where yeah. you're like. You're like, you're like fucking Alan. I've even thought about that. And to be fair, Phil Dunn probably never thought about it either. Do you know what I mean? And so he's a, he's in that situation. And so, but it is like, it, you know, so, someone always gets shafted. And there's always someone who who's got a season ticket because their mates working abroad for a year. Yeah. Or their mates had a baby, and so with a season ticket, you know, often you'll hear stories of, well, I've lent it to a mate for the season because it suits us, or me and my brother share it. And one weekend he goes, one weekend yeah. I go. Obviously, with this situation now with the credits, I've got to be in that seat and the ticket's on my phone and it's only on the one phone. Now, obviously, there may be phone swapping. Let's talk of people getting burners. It's all very line of duty, this, but <laughs> people getting burner phones yeah, yeah. for their credits. Yeah. You know, because, because why wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, get a burner phone, pass it around. That, that Obviously, there's people will always invent ways. But the issue was previously with the fan cards that people were passing around fan cards. Touts were, were going around, passing around. Envelopes full of fan cards to people before the game. They charge however much for the club. Did also take the passport as a deposit, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so they brought the card back, which is <laughs> and mad, they was and they weren't they weren't passing. I imagine it's safe to say some of them weren't passing them on as face value as I do to my mate at work who wants to take his lad. And the club did that analysis and they found out that something like was it eighty percent of fan card holders tickets. I think it was sorry. I think it was fifty three percent of tickets. Was, yeah. That was it. Fifty three percent of tickets for the season had been transferred. Fan card holders had transferred them on, so half of them were getting moved on, and they didn't know who to a lot of the time. And then I think it was 80% of the tickets that were going in, the local sale, the late sales, you know, the nine quid tickets, mm. 80% of them were getting moved on. Yeah, which defeats yeah. the whole point. Yeah, and, it, and it's totally unfair, and it's, and it's not at all what that was brought in for. So it, it had to be addressed, but it's, it's a difficult situation because on the credit thing as well, at one point I think it was 11 games, and then in the summer... They just announced 13. It either went from 11 to 13 I or 12 to 13. I think it went from 11 to 13. I think it might move back again, though, yeah. to be but, honest. But they announced cause... without warning. Yeah, yeah. So in the summer, they just said, oh, it's going up to 13. I think it might go the other way. And the, some of them. Yeah. I know, and, it may, and I hope it does, but mm. the issue was there was people who oh, yeah, specifically yeah, yeah. had made sure they'd got to 11 who then all of a sudden were cast into the wilderness in the pot for anyone 13 and below. Um, so it... Th- it's a really difficult thing to, to when you've got a family and you've got different commitments to balance getting into the game, in, into the ground that many times a season. And, and you're a chap. <laughs> <laughs> it's harder yeah. to get if you're a woman. Yeah, of course it and is. That, and yeah. that, that, and, and that I is... live near the grounds and I'm not yeah. I'm not driving up 100 miles to be there on a yeah. Wednesday night and missing the last train having to get off at 70, everyone looking at me like I'm a twat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why is he getting off early? Yeah. Just because his train leaves. Jürgen's yeah, furious with him but he's got to get back to Lime Street. Jürgen, yeah, fucking hell. Uh, everyone's doing their best. Um, I said before, John, about not having uh, bought that many tickets from Liverpool. I've spent a lot of time on Liverpool's website uh, on matters pertaining to the friends and family scheme, trying to make it work in a wide variety of ways. Uh, to quote uh, the person who actually uh, who's, who's, who had a child who new season tickets, I'm now fortunate enough to be able to be on. Uh, he once said to me, "The thing about this is it works until it doesn't," mm. and that is the the friends and family sort of exhaustion basis is that it all works until it doesn't, and that's where it can just become exceptionally difficult to to be able to get people in the ground who just want to be in the ground. I hasten to add. Yeah, it is, and and listen, you know. The solution maybe is just to sell it back to the club. And it's funny when Phil said mentioned that before, I forgot you can even do that. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm so ingrained to who, who we're going to get to, you know, who we're going to help out here and who, who you know, who, who needs one and who do we get one. And we maybe just do have a bit more, too much of an obsession or seeing to get holders of, of you know, well, well, I can't go. So who, who, who am I going to pick? It's my ticket. It? Yeah. I decide where it goes. Yeah. When that's probably not quite right if we're being. No, maybe, maybe, honest. maybe, maybe the solution is. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and listen, you know, there's, there's other tickets where I can help out people and stuff like that. And I don't mind doing it because, you know, it gets people in and, and people, are, you know, they're grateful and stuff like that. But, you know, maybe we do need to have the attitude more of if you can't go, just sort of, you know, give it back. I, I presume the club are given close to full value for it now. I know yeah, you, of- they just add it, they basically add it to your um, account online. And then the next time you buy a ticket, you can oh, you it's buy a season ticket or whatever. Because yeah, yeah. I, I know there's a bit of a controversy on that. But I think. 
you know, so, so maybe you know we need to, we just need to be you know a bit less obsessed of you know well, well if I can't go then then it is it is up to me to to to, to find someone because you know it saves save you a lot of less of stress you know yeah. to, to, to be honest with you as well if you do that like Liverpool sell it but I think what Liverpool, <laughs> what Liverpool <laughs> let them sell their own tickets exactly, for football matches yeah. <laughs> it's fucking shattered them this to be honest with you. honestly I've seen at times John draw diagrams as to what's happening with tickets and I've just sort of looked at it and got my head's kettled here and then the next week I was doing it I think you were away or something yeah. and I was like I've just I've become that fella from last week trying to sort this out it's like having another job isn't it yeah. it's really hard some of your Fridays are mad yeah it can be yeah but you're just just trying to get everyone in and trying to you know make sure that you know I don't like seeing empty seats in the ground it does me head in you know when there's an empty seat by you and you're thinking did, did someone who you you know, kill yeah. for that. Do you know what I mean? Or absolutely love, you know, to be someone who's sat in front of the computer for two days trying yeah. to get a ticket, and that's yeah, and just that, that seat's just empty. So that sort of drives me mad. But I know that's why the, the, the club have made changes to to try and stop that, and that's one of that because it was driving them mad as like, well. For really, example, that bar, the Barcelona game, there were a thousand empty seats in Anfield that yeah. night. Yeah, a thousand, so, and that was before you could transfer your ticket yeah. on your phone, wasn't it? So that was before that, before you could just say like, you know, it was it still fan cards then? Yes, I think it would have been still fan cards. cards. Basically, died as COVID came in. Yeah, so so some of those thousand would have been someone who's who suddenly had to work late yeah. and and lives in Wales or something, and you know, and then car sort of, broke down. Yeah, oh, that that ticket's just sat in his way. Whereas if it, if it, if it had been the electronic version, he could have just you know transferred it over to someone or whatever. And so I think. I think it is a, a system that makes more sense in terms of you know getting people in, but like you just say, Neil, it just it just is a nightmare to work. And you know, I take Phil's point before, and if you don't know them in the summer, then that's fine. But you know, there's just people you just don't think of. Like someone will message me, like, oh, I wouldn't mind getting me and the kid a, a couple of tickets for Christmas. Uh, well, we might get two or three people are messaging me saying I want to take my lad or my daughter uh, next year. I'll go to any game. Want to say it's a Christmas present? Can you help me? And I'm like, to be honest, no. And like I'm, I, I can't. I couldn't even tell you how to start. I can't even tell you how to start helping yourself. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and that and that is a bit mad. Yeah. Really, that there's is a, a date mad. next November where you need to get up at eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. But as part, as part of that, there's a good example from this year. The Wolves game that was called off. I know someone who was who, who, a friend. A, it's a friend of a friend, but I know it's true because I know the, my friend is, and, and and he's very straightforward. But they were uh, taking uh, someone was coming up from 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 South Wales to take. Uh, take the child to a first game for the Wolves home game that got cancelled because the Queen died and that'll go back midweek they've still got the ticket but it's going to go back midweek if it's not a half term but even if it is a half term the whole thing's now become much more complicated and it's like well you're not going to get to a game now this year because they're mm. not anyone's friends and family they haven't even got supporter numbers mm. so you're not going to get to a game now this year it's now practically impossible to imagine a circumstance where that can now be solved yeah. uh, and that is and that's not you know all these things and you've got to be careful because there's the overall data and then there's the in individual anecdotal sort of parts of this but these things are are there and they are present I mean to sort of end this bit Phil not these could want to put a trailer out for the club documentary uh, but like part of this is almost like what you sort of want Anfield to be I think everyone is pretty much united in the fact that you don't want you don't want it to be touting. But then the flip side of that is there's possibly people listening to this going, you're saying you don't want it to be touting. Touting's the only way I'm going to get in that ground, mate. Uh, in all seriousness, you know, that mm. touting's the only way I'm going to be able to come from abroad and feel as though I can get in that ground in a, in a manner that's organised. And that's <clears throat> something really odd to have to acknowledge, but it, you, I think you do have to sort of oddly acknowledge that around the secondary ticketing thing. I mean, I'm back to the fact that my logical conclusion always becomes abolish season tickets, uh, which upsets everybody. But it upsets everybody equally. Uh, say what you want about it, it's fair saying. But my point is more that in, it feels... I've waited 20 years for one of these. <laughs> you, you, you are where you're at. Like, number one on the season ticket coming, waiting yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there's a year where your dad gets in and then we abolish them the year. <laughs> it is. You know, Phil, but I think that you'd end up, you know, in terms of what you actually want Anfield to be, is you want it to be full of people who are desperate to be there, who love being there, one way or the other. You know, who, for me, the loyalty thing, I think it's interesting, but there's part of me that's a bit like, but what are we all doing tomorrow? I know what we've all done yesterday, but what are we all doing tomorrow? Like, are we all looking forward to, are we all looking forward to, for instance, Leicester at home on the 30th? Can everyone who's in the ground for Leicester at home on the 30th be desperate to be in the ground for Leicester at home on the 30th? And then onwards until, say, Fulham on the 18th of March. That's the spirit that I want in the ground but there is part of it where simultaneously if you want to have the idea that you've got this set of supporters who are knowledgeable who pick the, pick the moments all that sort of stuff they do need to have been going for many a year as well yeah. what is it that we want it to be yeah the, the, the demand and the supply issue sort of creates an, some problems in that cause do you think it'll make a big difference the Anfield Road do you think it'll make a difference uh, it'll make a difference because it's 7,000 more seats but how much difference I have to this conversation, do you think it'll make a difference to this conversation? Um, 
I think it will for cup games. I think it will for cup games, yeah, because I think, like, I think the club would be wise not to increase the number of auto cup scheme, for example, because I think, I think that's sort of because I think I don't know how many tickets are actually available for cup games on a. Let's just buy a ticket. Is 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 everybody in the ground theoretically away fans or people on the auto cup scheme? Is that because it can't be far off? The auto cup scheme sells out. Yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sells exactly. Out, and if you miss it, you're absolutely yeah, exactly. in big trouble. It happened to me. I missed it once. I was on holiday. Missed it. My dad wasn't on the case. Didn't sign up. <laughs> yeah. Your dad's getting He's getting some flack. Really enjoying this. Yeah. There's, there's, there's some, body there's some in text of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, I, but I was away. I remembered basically when I was on a ferry. I was coming back from Rotterdam. Remembered. Panicked. Tried to get on. What? It, yeah. Missed it. Uh, it's the season before Madrid. Um, and I'd been on the Auto Cup scheme for the best part of 15 years and then I had to go into the late sales trying to get a ticket for every Champions League game last minute and it it was unbelievable. I spent yeah. days of my life just pressing refresh on the website in the hope that a couple of tickets would come up on the returns and they did every time. They, on, on the day of the game, all the way up to Barcelona. Wow. Um, and, you know, the Auto Cup scheme's yeah. another thing. Uh, with, the, with, the new, with the increase at the Anfield Road stand, they've got to think about... I think it's about 1,800 is going to be hospitality and sports bar and then 5,200 general. And as you said, there's, there's not been a discussion yet as to what the breakdown of that will be. When but I think really... Stand, they kept the, the ratios the same with what it already was. Yeah. So I think you can probably... If they do the same, you can probably work it out in terms of splitting the 5,200 into um, season tickets and members in the, at the same yeah. ratio. I mean, obviously I I'd like 4,322 probably... new season <laughs> ticket holders. Um, <laughs> but, but I understand that that's not how it should be because a proportion of those tickets need to be yeah. freely available. Yeah. And, and I would say some of them should go on sale the day of the game. But mm. that's a different conversation. The club... Obviously, want the money. They want it in the bank. They don't want, uh, you know, a uh, and then the administrative nightmare of the day. Yeah, of, the game, of course, yeah. of course. So if anyone was listening to that, they'd be like, "Well, why on earth would we do that?" Yeah, Even it's like, for example, yeah. three hundred tickets for locals under the age of eighteen. Something like you can do. Yeah, you can yeah. do all kinds of things with these tickets. I think the the, the the problem that's potentially coming is that if they do increase the number of auto cup scheme tickets, it then makes it harder for the ba- the ballots for finals become coming on to that Phil that they have but more think, people in. but I think to, to answer your question though Neil I think in terms of what we want from from a home crowd if we go to away crowds a little bit different and I think there's personally there's a stronger argument to do away for credits in, but for, for the ways than there is for homes but because but I think for homes you do want continuity is important like when we have these conversations in real life sometimes I'm like yeah but who's doing the flags yep. do you know what I mean like who's, no, who's, who's that, doing that point. and who's doing that and who's reinforcing the fact that we know what to do in certain situations and we know and there's a there's a culture of this football club and there's a culture of the fan base and that doesn't just happen because we've all decided to support Liverpool it happens over you know they used to say you get your education from the cop that was the that was the the, the, the phrase that the sort of you know old old fellas mainly had sort of use and and it, there is an element of truth in that really and I think also as well if you know when I've spoken to people who I've spoken to people in the, in the past who've been to games and it might be their first game and they're over from America or whatever and they've been in the cop and it's like, oh, it's brilliant, you know, everyone around me and this fella shouted this and stuff. That's what they want. And then I spoke to other people and, and they've been in the top of the Addy Road and it was like, just all Americans up there. It was weird. <laughs> and it was like, in that mad sort of way, just like if we all went to Barcelona, you'd want to be surrounded by like their like hardcore support or like, you know, not necessarily, you know, like ultras or whatever, but people who've like been I once went to Madrid, done. Barcelona, and the best bit was me trying to communicate to the Madrid supporters around me, and we had a great time. Yeah. And McManaman was playing, and they were talking to me about McManaman and all that. And if I'd have just been in with a load of me, it would have been well, 10 next to a stag do. It would have been, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It would have been 10 me's or, or like in the middle of a stag do or something like that. 10 me's like, is a harrow in the world. What on earth have I come here for? Yeah, I could exactly. just watch this on the telly. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So, so that, that, that's important, I think, for everyone, including the people who only get to go once every blue moon. Okay, uh, coming up is a trailer for our wonderful Jurgen Klopp documentary, uh, the first part of which is out at 12 noon tomorrow on YouTube. It'll best be 12 noon. I keep saying 12 noon. I mean, I'm saying that with an unbelievable... It's in a calendar, Neil. You, you, think, you think I never worked at the Anfield Rap, the conference with which I'm saying <laughs> it 12 is finished, noon. It is, yeah, it is finished. Uh, 12 noon tomorrow. Uh, our brilliant first episode of our Jurgen Klopp documentary. That is to come before then. Just contemplate Neil docking. He could be uh, anywhere, Liverpool or Rome. But Neil's in Rotterdam shouting as his dad on the phone. Here's <laughs> <laughs> Jurgen.
it was a, a really nice childhood here. Each other, known each other, and we played together. Oh, I said, I lose my job. Jürgen was the hero in this game. The people from, from Mainz wasn't interested in Mainz 05. That changed when Jürgen was the coach. From the moment he came here, he, he was aware that this is about more than just football. In Dortmund, first is football. Maybe family first, but then is Borussia. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be one type of character, but you have to be in tune with the fact that this club means everything to so many people. Welcome back. Uh, Phil, you've watched the documentary. It's good, isn't it? Best have, so. Very enjoyable. It's, um, I'm excited for the other four. Four? Another four. Another four. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's Two more before Christmas excellent. and then the other two it's, in March. It's very well made. That's. It's not just the content that's good. It's the... Yeah, it's beautifully the short. Cinema, cinema talk. That's the... Yeah, cinematography. It's, it's very good. It's... Right. Yeah, Barry good. Norman, eh? Yeah. I tell you what, never likes have you. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, me talking, me talking about production values in films, mate. It's like dealing with Mark Cousins or Care Mode. <laughs> uh, never known the likes. Um, marvelous stuff. Okay, do check it out. It is the absolute business. We are delighted with it. Let's get on to the next contentious little bit of this then, which is aways and finals. We'll start off with with domestic aways. John, as someone who's been to a lot of domestic aways, one season, every single one of them, uh, which I've never known you more miserable, if we're all honest about it. Um, it feels like three different <laughs> close shows. I mean, you weren't having a good time, were you? January was tough. Plymouth away on a Tuesday night. Plymouth and Southampton yeah. back, to back, on when, back to back Wednesdays aways. And... Uh, when the draw was coming against Plymouth, I f- well, we were sat together, weren't we? Yeah, yeah on yeah. seventy, I was winding them up on on about eighty-five. I yeah, felt like yeah. I just wanted to hug them. Yeah, to be honest yeah. with you, just <laughs> someone can score. I don't care yeah. which team scores. Yeah, just yeah, someone yeah. scores. At least, they, at least they fucking won at Plymouth. They got beat at Southampton <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the League Cup semi. It's where I have sympathy for the Blues. But when they went down to Bournemouth with midweek to yeah, get smashed, yeah. <laughs> then they had to go back on the Saturday. Some of them stayed, Neil. That's the funny part. <laughs> At least they probably Some of them good. actually they stayed. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, say what you want. On Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Everton didn't play, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is, has a lot to recommend it. Um, so you know, I haven't done them all and done them for many a year. I'm gonna. You can describe the away as a closed shop, and I do think it is a closed shop. And there's lots of reasons for that, but it feels at times like it's actually three different clothes shops. I feel like there's a clothes shop in the northwest, a clothes shop in London, and then there's almost the rest. Mm-hmm. Um, like I do feel as though Liverpool's Liverpool Midland aways have a very specific vibe to them, and I'm I'm very much in favour of much of the vibe. Um, but that's what I mean. So to just to describe it as a clothes shop acts like it's just one thing with quite literally the same three thousand people, and that isn't the case either. No, it's not. It's not. And and Everton's a funny one as well, where it's like this, you know. It, it it just seems to be always a really scouse away end uh, for for whatever reason you know at at Everton so there's the sort of the separation is there there's there's some who, who go a lot who, who don't fancy Goodison Park who don't fancy Old Trafford as well because you know it's it takes a certain type of person to enjoy it I suppose Kev I think you would say yeah Kev, Kev goes to Everton <laughs> I think even Kev's fucked United off now though. Um, it's just a bit shit. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, I think it's the worst away. Yeah, season. yeah. Unless you win five 0 yes. or something, boss like that, then then it's 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 generally you know it's not it's not a customer experience. Let's say. <laughs> so uh, in any, in any, well, unless unless you unless unless you're a masochist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unless you might, don't mind not being able to go to the toilet. Basically, unless you know you know your normal customer experiences. The funniest um, things the stewards now wear those goggles from chemistry class yeah. uh, all the way through the game for and it, you're like this this doesn't feel this doesn't feel like as you say this doesn't feel like a customer experience yeah, this yeah so but, but, but that's by the by but but i think yeah so so it, it isn't i think you are right to neil to point out that it isn't necessarily the case that you know it's the same people but you know i think the the control and tickets issue and that sort of thing i think is is even more i'm probably touting as well i think i think touting's a bit of an issue at anfield i don't think it's a massive one that might be me being naive but i think Percentage wise, it feels like more of an issue with away away games, and it's you know I had a little look just before I found one side seat waived. There's twenty tickets on sale now for Villa away, and I'm like, how? How's like how's how's this like just fine? <laughs> Do you know, and that's just one website called Seat Wave. Do you know what I mean? There'll be another website with with another source of twenty you know on and and stuff like that and. And the tickets are over three hundred pounds each, and and the face value is thirty. So there's people making like a thousand percent markup. Um, it'll be people, you know, 
you know, people people like to say that you've come from, you know, this or that, or, or some some people claim it's the ticket office that's out. Uh, there'll be other people who are like, oh, this is this is ones they give to partners and stuff. It's it's not. It's people who built up the credits to sell them and, and are now making a fortune. And you know, grafters they call them in the city because they like to give a nice word for it. It's just fucking touts. And and I think that away 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 crowds are more than an issue for me at the moment, especially as I think the ends are a bit shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't I don't go to I can't remember the last time I was in a way and and there was a strong argument, yeah, but you've got to keep the, all these people together because of this. It's a lot of people who to the same people they've been to a lot of games, you know, they've been there, they've seen it, they've done it, there's a little bit of that. You know, there'll be the odd time where it'll be good, but like so I, I could make like before when I made an argument to you that you've got to keep the same core of people because they keep the traditions, they keep the culture, there's the flags and stuff like that. I find that much harder for the ways. I can't remember the last time I was there, you know, going to really important. I think I think it'd be not just fairer but better as an experience if you just completely opened it up. You know, you mentioned United before, they do a ballot. Their their way ins look fucking great. You know, we're looking at a United away and then going, That's full of tourists or that's full of this or that. It's not an open ballot though. No, no, I don't know. I, 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 uh, as ever, I don't mean to completely yeah. open. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, uh, two point six million of yeah. people applying for Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and also, let's just be quite clear where the hypocrisy is here. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind. No, no, <laughs> it's 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 members of the ticket holders, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and you it? also have to like. There's a criteria to enter it as well. You saw it's a bit. This this has a bit mad. Like to get in this ballot, you have to have registered for six previous ballots but if you don't lose the, if you don't if you get the ticket and don't use the ticket you're then not eligible to enter a ballot till the end of the season it's a bit it's but it's, as a, it's a, it's a managed, system of things yeah, oh yeah oh no I, I agree with me. <laughs> it's, it's managed in a way yeah. that means it's not like it's a ballot but it's not a it's still semi-closed in a way yeah. if that makes sense mm. there's Anyways. no like away, the ways are getting a bit silly with the amount of the amount of people who let's say haven't got a specific number of credits to enable them to buy the ticket. That's that's the best way I can put it. You you can stand in an away end and judge someone by their mannerisms or whatever, and know that they're not a regular there. So then you have to look and go, how are these people getting their tickets? And this is a, it's a serious problem, and it's also the most difficult one for the the club to cut down on because the tickets are just still paper. Yeah, and I know I know Everton have got a trial coming up. They're playing Manchester City at the end of December, and um. They're actually trialing electronic tickets. Liverpool tried to do it, did it at Palace the back end of 2019. I think a small number of people had to get an NFC pass and use that to get into the ground. Mm. So these things are affordable, but once you do that and it's sort of, they, they give, for example, they send me my ticket and it's on my season, it's just updates onto my season ticket. Yeah, That means that I can't transfer it. I'd have to basically give someone my phone for them to take to Bournemouth on a Saturday. Yeah. Which I'm not going to do, am I? I'm no, not going to no. go, I'll tell you what, here's my phone. Uh, I know it's Friday night now, bring it back sometime on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be, that's no problem at all. That's just not going to happen, is it? So once you can sort of remove the paper element from away tickets, I think it starts to become a bit easier. You can still allow people to forward them on in the same way as yeah. home tickets. And you can also, the credits as well, which... Once the credit, if the credit's transferred as well, it would open it up a little bit. It would mean that Bournemouth away, for example, I've no mentioned Bournemouth away about ten times, but it's you are about obsessed with Bournemouth. It's, away, but it's a though. mad one, Bournemouth away, years. because yeah. it's you have to have nineteen credits to get a ticket for Bournemouth away, mm. and the amount of people in the end who are actually going to nineteen games, and I'll include myself in this, is it's not half. It's not. It's probably not. It's probably a quarter. Yeah. Now some people are using their own ticket to do that. I'll be honest. I'm not necessarily doing it to keep the credits up when I get a ticket to a game I'm going for I'm giving it because one of my mates wants to go to yeah. match it's, it's, not, so it's not as simple as right I must buy this ticket and I'll find a home for it yeah. it's just you know someone who wants to go to every I know game. someone who wants to go to the match so the idea that I don't buy a ticket I'm entitled to that A would stop them from going to the match and B stop me from going to a future match that I want to go to it's just yeah. it's it's a flaw in the system and that's the kind of thing that also needs ironing out because once you iron that out you do open it you, you open the tickets up and what was talking about with networks before as well, I think Tottenham away about a month ago was that was really interesting. I went on a coach, I've been on there loads of times. There's a few other people on there who do this, loads of people who've been on it before. Um, and I think I was the third oldest person on it, and I was sat about halfway, and everyone in front of me, they had tickets, they were 17, 18. Now, 
that shows that it, in some ways it's the tickets are circulating yeah. in a way that is allowing well, lads, 17, lads 18 girls that lads. age will yeah. just get on a bus exactly and I think that's fair play and this is where I think you know sorry to cut across Phil I think I think people who want to get in the ground enough always will and I'm fine with a bit of game in the system like I as well as BT United fans about it they're just like they just you just get enough of you in the ballots and 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 you you know and then and then you'll see how many tickets you get and then you'll sort of source each other I'm all right with that because it's a bit of work do you know what I mean there's a bit of work to that rather than just well I built up 19 credits 20 years ago so now we'll just buy them and then either pass them on or sort of sell them and so I think for the people who really really want to be in the ground and this is this is for the case for, for any game do you know what I mean like I don't you know I don't think there's a game of football that I couldn't get into do you know what I mean because because of the networks have built up because, not because I do the Anfield rap but because of you know the because you know the, the, the networks you build up the, the, the you know the people you, you get to sort of know over the time really and I just try sort of every, you know hook or by crook you know I don't mean like that I mean legitimately do you know what I mean like you, you sort of get it and that's the case for, for everyone I know really and so for the ways I don't think it's suddenly you know, opening it up, and then all these people who were who were able to get to, to tickets, you know, suddenly can, you know, suddenly can't. Sorry, I don't think that would happen. You know, what what I'm sort of, you know, wanting to, to to sort of to have less of is is the people who aren't making any effort to get a ticket, and then aren't making any effort once they're in the ground, and then are just sort of going home. And yeah, they're having a nice day, but you know, is it helping the team? Is it helping you know more getting more people in? And could the atmosphere, could everything sort of be better? You know, in a situation where where that didn't happen, and the talent and thing, which again is just a massive issue for away games. Does that make sense? Yeah, I completely, I completely agree. The thing I was saying is that these young lads were managing to get tickets and. There's obvious flaws in the system, but if 17, 18 year old lads are able to get tickets for a ways, it's not imperfect if that makes sense. Because I think without people of that age and who have that attitude of how they go the match, you lose a lot if you remove those people. So it's it, it, as with everything, there is a very, very difficult balance and act here. Very difficult. Uh, go on. I was just say you talked about United earlier. I think they've had all sorts of issues that. I mean, I go, I go, I've been to more European aways in my life than I have domestic aways. Um, I've just never been You'd on like that. Let's go to more domestic aways. I'd like to go to more, yeah. Yeah, I definitely would. I mean, I'm probably finally in a position where I could <laughs> with work and money and life, you know. Uh, yeah, I, could pro- I probably could actually get it by <laughs> the powers that be. Um, <laughs> but I've never in the past have been able to. It's not, it's not been an option. But I know that there's been all sorts of issues around having to collect your tickets as well. That's a major bone of contention. That's for European away. For European yeah. away. But I think with United, they've done that for some domestic games United as well. always have a random sample that collects for ways to basically ensure that the right person is using the ticket. Yeah. And if, if, you know, if they send you an email and go, you're collecting your ticket, take your ID and list the ticket office. If you don't collect the ticket, that's you done for... I can't remember how many games you basically is, then you get basically, banned for a you're while. Basically yeah. banned for a while and penalised for, for for doing that, which yeah. is which is how they manage to manage this closed shop in a way that means that it's <laughs> a functioning closed yeah. shop. If that mm. makes sense, and it I can see the really... thinking thinking behind that. But again, it's impacting on your your sort of liberty, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, as a customer. But that's the argument that people are making around Liverpool is that you know I've got two days in Rome, say, and you want me to spend three hours, you know. Queuing up somewhere to get a ticket. Basically, yeah, uh, yeah, and and I get that, but I think, to, again, I, f- I feel like something does need to be done, and I feel like oh, this is the club trying to do something to to improve a situation. The problem is that the the always, I feel with the club, they always sometimes end up compromising a little bit too much. Like and by that I mean you either do it or you don't. Do you know what I mean? And so they, they, they announce something and then they get sort of talked out to the, the harsher ends around it, and so they're like, oh, we'll just do a small section, and you know. So you can buy a ticket and put that in someone else's name when you buy it and they can sort of collect it. But you still keep the credit. But you still keep the credit. And also you could you could be selling that ticket to that person for three hundred quid. You've just got the name, do you know what I mean? And so yeah. like it doesn't really like do any of the benefits to it. Like it's not it's not helping get more people on the ladder because they're you know yeah. it's not it's not stopping touting. It's just pissing off a few people yeah. who who, who want to be in a nice restaurant in Rome, but are instead uh, uh, are in are in the cold queuing up for 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 the match ticket. It yes. just makes me wonder if some of the changes that have been made, you know, the home ticket sales, if if they don't need to be also replicated with the aways. Mm. But as someone who doesn't go to them, I don't want to really advocate for this because there could be advocate there could be. Unintended consequences, you know. I, I, like you said, the last thing you want is all those 
young lads, young girls who were going the matches to struggle all of a sudden yeah. to be able to get there because they're yeah. the lifeblood of the away support. Yeah. And often when, you know, as a, someone watching on TV, you look at the away ends and you think, oh, they're having the time of their lives there, like our young support, and they're the ones you want to be there. Yeah. Like I've, I've collected European aways this year. I collected a ticket in Milan, in Lisbon, in Glasgow, and I also collected in Amsterdam as well. Collected all four times. In Milan, it was a disorganised nightmare, but it was everyone, and that was apparently because the tickets were e-tickets that they wouldn't... They were pay printed off tickets that Milan wouldn't let Liverpool print off in Liverpool. So everyone had to go. It was a disorganised mess. I mean, in terms of what John was saying before about you know putting the tickets in someone else's name and someone else used it, there's a fellow in front of me who didn't speak a word of English and he turns up with a confirmation email from the ticket online website he bought off and give it to them and went oh there's my ticket and they were like where'd you get this from and it's a bit like well i mean i suspect that ticket has now been taken out of circulation because it's obviously been moved on by you know yeah. under the table things but that that's an example of what you can still do even though they're trying to put these these checks in place in lisbon it would have been easy if i hadn't have managed to put the same two passport numbers <laughs> I put the same passport number on two tickets and they then wouldn't give me eight tickets whilst I gave them a new passport number, which was which was fair enough. It was my my stupid fault. It would have been quite easy. Glasgow, I walked into a building, it took me a minute. Amsterdam, I walked in, it took me two minutes. And they were they were in reasonably handy locations and it worked and it worked perfectly well. Now, the reason that I think it was a complete waste of time is that the credits stayed in the hands of the person who bought the ticket. So like one of them was there's I think Within my mates, there's eight of us who have the Euro away credits, but sometimes there's 12, 13 of us who go, and the other four will probably go on someone else's ticket. Now, it would be much easier if when A didn't go, if Q, who has no credits, got the credits, and then everyone's happy. Over the period of time, if this would all work out in that all of us would have the ability to go to the games that we want to go to, and we'd all get the tickets. And the, the closed shop actually negatively impacts these people. So, for example, one of my mates ends up ends up in ballots for finals and he'll go to more Euro ways than people who will have a guaranteed ticket. He will do more European games in a season than people yeah. who have guaranteed tickets to the final. Mm. And that's, that's a completely flawed yeah. system that just doesn't work and it feels so incredibly easy to fix it and I don't understand why it's not fixed. I don't, I don't understand why there isn't someone going, hang on, this is a bit ridiculous that someone can... They can do four home games buy a ticket for three aways, sell the ticket for the other two home games, sell the ticket for four, they've got 14 credits, they've been to five games and they've got a Champions League final ticket and that over someone who could theoretically go to 14 and get none, which is, is it 14? Is it four? No, it's, it's 12, isn't 12. it? 12. And that just, that's just... You're thinking of the old days Yeah, the I'm thinking of the... Yeah, I'm thinking, <laughs> thinking of the Europa League as well, aren't I, with the extra <laughs> rounds. Yeah, it's just, it, it's just flawed and it feels like the... They're trying to do things, but they're not quite doing things. That's what and I when before, yeah. and when they are trying to do these things, they could actually do them so they're beneficial to people. Whereas the European away situation isn't really beneficial to anyone at the minute. It's just taking time out of your your day on a on a holiday. And I get the I get the point that it is you know you are on holiday, but at some point you do have to go. Look, I'm doing this and it's helping other people. And that that if if the credits are transferring, I'm happy to go to a hotel and take half an hour out of yeah. my day for the benefit of people who haven't been able to buy European away tickets. For example, an 18-year-old now. How is that 18-year-old buying their own European away ticket? They aren't. Can't, they just physically yeah. can't. And yeah. they, that that stinks. I was lucky but that... Then when it comes to the final, exactly. the person bought it, well, yeah, I'll go to that. Exactly. Like I was quite lucky in that the, the credit system basically started when I was 16, 17. So I was able to start going at exactly the right time get the credits at exactly the right time and use them in the way that benefits me. And in fairness, it's not a benefit me in terms of, you know, I just pick and choose. I, I don't pick and choose. I literally go pretty much every game. So it's not a case of I'll, I'll buy these tickets and then that'll enable me to go to that. I am actually using the tickets as the system in theory intends, mm. but most of the people involved are not doing that. And if we managed it in a way where people were using it as intended, it would work much better for a far higher number of people. I think what you said there was interesting, Phil, around, you know, you would prepare to do something if it, if it helped, you know, a, another person, you know, get what they, what they felt they should. And I feel like it's a mistake that the club's made in the past as well, while they're still making now with these things, is that they never explained why yeah. they're doing anything. They'll announce a new set of things and then they'll be a bit vague around, sometimes a bit vague around touting or, or whatever. 
But I think it's almost like they're, they're too scared to, to, to come out to say, we're putting this in place and we're doing that because we think this is a fairer way to, to sell the tickets or to, to, to reward loyalty or whatever it and is. And this or is why. To, and this is why. And, and, and also, say, say numbers, you know what I mean? Come out with the fact that, you know, if, if you know that, you know, you sold 3,000 tickets for one game and 2,000 and them ended up in completely different places and, and just, just come out and say that. And I'd like them to just... I think they, I think they're a bit scared to do it, and I think they'd be surprised how the majority of people. And again, it comes down to what we said before: was who it helps and who it doesn't. But the majority of people, if because because I think that they are trying to, like Neil says, they try and make improvements every year, and I think they try and do them for the right reasons. And I think sometimes, you know, what they try and do just gets kind of like softened by pressure uh, from from various places, you know, into kind of a, the, this kind of compromise that in the end does sort of doesn't suit anyone. And so I think. Why would they, I think they're, they're almost better off saying, look, we're doing this and we're going to try it and this is the reasons to why we're trying to do it. And then you can argue with the reasons if you want, rather than at the moment arguing with, well, why should I go to this place when I'm on a European away and pick up you know, tickets when I, when I want to be you know, in a restaurant or sightseeing or whatever it is people want to do? Like We're arguing with that rather than the fundamentals of what they're trying to achieve because they're not presenting it. Okay, that'll do. Uh, if you've got any issues with any aspect of this, you feel like something wasn't covered, firstly, we were clear from the outset we weren't going to be able to cover any, everything, and secondly, it will be a, a topic that is repeatedly revisited. Uh, secondly, I'd like to apologise for not making the requisite joke when Phil said he was the third oldest on the bus. Uh, I was just thinking too much about the issue, to be honest with you, and getting the podcast moving along, but running jokes are important, John, and there's no better joke than one that's been told before. <laughs> well, yeah, my favourite type of jokes are the same jokes. Can I just, can I just add something before Go we on. finish? Sorry. Okay. Uh, all I want to say is that... the. This might be a really sort of... You mentioned before that Liverpool are in a fairly unique situation. It's just also Manchester United. There's also a chance that it's never as good as this. And that's like yeah. quite a depressing thing to say. But I think, you know, we might never have a case again where yeah. we've got this amazing manager, this incredible football team, the win and everything. And it is absolutely unreal. And everyone wants to come to the party. It's like the past three or four years, Liverpool Football Club have hosted the best party in town. And oh, shock, there's queues around the block to get in. Do you know what I mean? Like the 5 1. Exactly. In a <laughs> Don't even bother queuing when you won't get in. Don't even bother coming. In literally, a literally, is that actually, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> in a couple of years, especially with the biggest, the biggest stadium, a lot of these problems might might not be and, and listen let's hope that that's not the case let's hope that Liverpool Football Club is the best party in town for the next 30 or 40 years but it might not be the case and Liverpool know that which is another reason why you can't just piss people off yeah. do you know what I mean because then then you suddenly like oh Roy Hodgson's back and you're like do you want that season to get back and they're like no go fuck yourself uh, in slight defence of the ticket office I think it's really funny that if you read any any club's forums Everybody thinks their ticket office is the worst entity. Oh, yeah. like corners. It's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Like corners. Yeah. It's really funny. Like th- I think Everton was trying to renew the season tickets last week, and they were unable to log in to actually buy a ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you... They were like, "Come on, renew your season ticket. Log into this. Logged in. No season ticket there for them to review." Yeah. You don't see how shit the kit system is, by the way. As in buying kits for kids. No. They basically. I mean, this is really off subject, but it'll cheer everyone up. <laughs> <laughs> because they haven't like You've got a review in a minute, John. They, they've basically pooled their their. They don't have like an, an their own online sort of system for, for for buying like merch online. Basically, they do it through a, a, a company that handles three or four, and basically a lot of time, like more than you think, like daily. I might just set up a search for it on Twitter. <laughs> like, there's, there's there's someone who's just buying an Everton kit for the for the ten year old kids and then getting a villa one and it's really funny <laughs> <laughs> and, no, like, and then the streets on twitter obviously why have i got this villa kit or oh, it's everton top of villa shorts or something <laughs> like that and it's like it's it's, it's amazing it's really, really good. That'll cheer you up as well. Excellent stuff. Thanks to Neil. Thanks to Phil. Thanks to John Andy for producing. Ask for producing. Why can't the ticket office beat the first man? 